हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अफेयर्स क्लाउड लर्न टू लीड दिस इज आशू एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ 19th ऑफ जून 2021 यू कैन सी टू बेस्ट इमेजेस ऑफ द डे बट टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर सो वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल लास्ट बट आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग यू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स दैट यू हैव टू लाइक दिस वीडियो यू हैव टू शेयर दिस वीडियो एंड यू हैव टू सब्सक्राइब आर चैनल इफ यू आर न्यू ऑन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म एंड गाइज यू कैन ज्वाइन आर एप्लीकेशन एंड इवन इफ यू कैन वॉन्ट टू डाउनलोड देन यू कैन डाउनलोड नेम डेज करियर्स क्लाउड एंड यू कैन डाउनलोड फ्रॉम द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स लिंक and after downloading you can basically log in with your email id and after that you can click on this crack current fair section if you want to subscribe for one year as well as for two year both the subscription prices are very much low and guys remember we are covering 90 to 95% of current fairs which are coming in your exam this is the genuinity this is the hard work of affairs cloud team but first of all how we are providing these current fairs we are providing daily current fair in the daily current fair section you will receive three type of the current fairs one is detailed current fair of particular day next is question and answer format of current fair third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application next is weekly section in the weekly again you will receive three type of the current fairs one is the detailed current fair second is the question and answer format of current fair and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis next is the monthly section we are providing four type of pdfs one is the detailed current fair second is question and answer format of current fair best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and also pocket pdf this is very important to revise the current fairs in two liner or the three liner and uh, you can revise uh, or you can use this pdf before your exam and guys, Guys, to enhance your performance, we are also providing like topic-wise current fair. Topic-wise current fair stands for we are providing twenty type of very important and the best current fairs related to single topic. And guys, if you want to just revise all the current fairs related to just one topic, then you have to pick or use these type of the PDFs. And if you are a banking awareness student, then we are providing three things: one is detailed current fair, second is the question and answer format of current fairs, and third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on an application on monthly basis. And if you want to revise all the past current fairs of 2021, then you you can use this uh, exam PDF and you can revise all the current fairs of a particular year. Next is special stands for budget and economic survey. We are providing expected question and answer related to budget and economic survey, which examiner can ask. And we are also providing detailed budget and economic survey. If you are preparing for your state exam, we are definitely providing state current affairs, and we are covering every state and union territory. So, guys, all these subscriptions comes under one subscription, not different different subscription. So you have to just download our application. Application name is Careers Cloud. You have to log in with the email ID, and you have to click on this crack current affairs section. After clicking on this section, you can subscribe a current fair for one year as well as for two year both the subscription prices are very much low if you see the price you will definitely surprise and on that minimal price we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ash10 and if you have any query you can uh, email us on this id and you can contact us on this number so let's begin today's session that is 19th of june 2021 but i am again requesting you all the student that you have to like this video you have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform you can join our telegram group from the description box link so let's begin today's session with the most important questions and here is our first question who has won the united nations convention to combat desertification that is unccd land for life award for 2021 So, guys, the most important thing under this question, this award, and this award is United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification Land for Life Award for 2021, and this award goes to Familial Forestry. So, this is the organization, and you can say Familial Forestry, the Environment Conservation Concept of Rajasthan-based climate activist Shyam Sundar Jani, he has basically won the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification Land for Life Award for 2021. You can also see here 2021 Land for Life Award. and the winner is familial pros, uh, forestry and guys you can also see this this is the idea of shyam sundar jani associate professor in the sociology at government uh, dungar college in bikaner rajasthan and it related the trees with the family and thereby tree is treated as a green member of the family green member of the family it includes the matter of trees and environment in the family and gradually the tree becomes part of the family consciousness and over the past 17 years 17 years more than 2.5 million trees have been planted over 15000 villages and more than 1 million family Please have joined the familial forestry campaign in the Western Rajasthan. So this campaign is basically related to which state? This is uh, to increase the forest area of the Rajasthan. And guys, you can also remember about this award that is Land for Life Award, which is presented by UNCCD. Uh, it is the world's highest award. 
वर्ल्ड हाइएस्ट अवार्ड रिगार्डिंग लैंड कंजर्वेशन एंड रिस्टोरेशन एंड इट वॉज लॉन्च बाय यू एन सी सी डी रिमेंबर इट इज लॉन्च बाय यू एन सी सी डी एंड एवरी टू ईयर्स यू एन सी सी डी ऑर्गेनाइजेज दिस अवार्ड एंड रेकोगनाइजेज एक्सीलेंस एंड इनोवेशन इन एफर्ट्स टू वर्ड्स लैंड इन बैलेंस लैंड इन बैलेंस एंड द अवार्ड वॉज अनाउंसड वर्चुअली ऑन द सेवनटीन ऑफ जून ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ डिजर्टिफिकेशन एंड ड्रॉड डे बाई प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ कॉस्टारिका यू डोंट हैव टू रिमेंबर द नेम ऑफ द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ कॉस्टारिका एंड द ग्लोबल ऑब्जर्वेंस इवेंट Uh, of 2021 was also hosted by Costa Rica and the award will be presented in August at the 8th International Desert Forum in China so you don't have to remember this thing you have to just remember the keyword land for life award it it basically goes to uh, this person or this organization both can be asked the person name is Shyam Sundar Jani and the name of the organization is Familial Forestry but in this question you can also remember about this organization UNCCD this organization was formed in 1994 and its headquarters is in bonn germany we covered this question when we were discussing about the uh, united nation convention on the command desertification day so uh, its headquarters is in bonn germany and guys remember it is the sole legally binding international agreement linking environment and development to sustainable land management under the united nation so familial forestry but these uh, another organization you are seeing here these are again very very important because these organization also won uh, uh, some type of the award like first of all you are seeing here hdfc bank this bank was regarded as india's best bank for smes small medium enterprises at the asia money best bank awards at the asia money best bank awards next is spice health recently this award was uh, given and we covered this question in the most important section that this organization won the gold award at 2021 asia pacific uh, uh, steve awards for most valuable medical innovation most valuable medical innovation and this is the organization of the uh, you can say the um, spice jet airline and next is the ireda remember indian renewable energy development agency this organization won green urja award green urja award so guys you can remember all these awards and this award is presented by the indian chamber of commerce icc so remember this now we can move to next question what is the rank of india in global peace index 2021 if you are uh, basically aware of any type of index then you have to remember three type of things one this index is published by whom second uh, the top country uh, which uh, uh, basically gets the top rank under this index and third is the rank of india so first of all we are covering the question what is the rank of india in the global peace index 2021 and answer of this question is 135th rank and you can see in the picture here india ranks 135th in the global peace index of 2021 and this index is published by institute of economics and peace which is situated in which country which is situated in australia and which country topped under this index iceland topped under this uh, uh, gpa 2021 index followed by the new zealand and denmark but you have to just remember the first place and this goes to iceland it is global peace index and the last country country is afghanistan you have to remember out of 163 countries india ranked 135 and 163rd rank goes to afghanistan so we uh, covered the top country we covered the least country and we also covered the india's rank we also covered which organization uh, basically released this index so all the major points are covered india with a score of 2.553 has been ranked 135 out of 163 country and uh, you can also remember uh, 135 rank specifies low state of peace low state of peace it means india's india is considering under the low state of peace country and the middle east and the north africa region remain the world least peaceful region remember if we are talking about the regions then uh, mena region or you can say the middle east and north africa region remain the world least peaceful region while the europe remain the most peaceful region in the world eight of the 10 most peaceful countries are from europe you can remember because iceland is there iceland is also in uh, the european continent and it ranks countries based on the 23 indicators across three domains like especially domains are uh, societal safety and security ongoing domestic and international conflict and the degree of militarization and it covers 99.7% of the world's population so this is a you can say uh, almost covers all the population all over world and uh, iceland score is 1.1 but india score is 2.553 so remember the top country the least uh, 
country and India's rank and the which organization basically published this index. So these are very, very important thing under this question. But you can also remember the other ranks which are basically recently published, like you can say the fourth rank. India occupied the fourth position in Renewable Energy Country Attractiveness Index. Recently, this index was re released. It is Renewable Energy Attractiveness Index. And uh, this is uh, released by Ernst & Young Global Limited. And the country which is topped under this index is United States of America. Next, 40th rank, India uh, got in the Intellectual uh, International Intellectual Property Index. International Intellectual Property Index. So, uh, this rank is basically published by United States Chamber of Commerce Global Innovation Policy Center and United States of America topped under this index. Next is 121st. It is Economic Freedom Index of 2021 and it is released by Heritage Foundation and the top country is Singapore. So, guys, remember Economic Freedom Index, India's rank is 121st and Singapore topped under this index. So, guys, these are most, most important things we covered. We are moving to next question. Again, uh, there is a rank question. What is the rank of India in Sustainable Development Report 2021? Again, we will cover three things most importantly. One, uh, the organization who published this index, India's rank and the top country. So first of all, this index is basically published by which organization? It is published by Sustainable Development Solution Network. And uh, this uh, organization is basically headquartered in Paris and New York. And India's rank, India's rank is guys 120th. So D is the answer. And top country, which country topped under this index? It is Finland. So remember these things, 120th and uh, it is published by Sustainable Development Solution Network in uh, keywords I am writing here, SDSN. So you can also remember this. Sustainable Development Report 2021 and India ranks 120th, Finland hold the first position and you can see here this is released by sustainable development solution network but its headquarters is in two places like is one is paris second is the new york and finland topped this index followed by sweden and denmark but you don't have to remember the second and third country you have to first remember only the first country and sdr is annual report which ranks the 193 united nation member countries based on their performance against the 17 sustainable development goals which we have to achieve by the year of 2030 because sustainable development goals was released in 2015 and within 50 years, we set a target of the sustainable development goals and we have to achieve by the year of 2030. India, with a score of 60.1, has been placed 120th rank out of 165 countries. 165 countries. And uh, it has been released since 2015 and it is based on the official data sources of United Nations, World Bank and the other organization and the non-official data sources like the research institution and the non-governmental organizations. And guys, you can also remember that Central African Republic, Central African Republic was the least ranked country. It means the rank of Central African Republic is 165th. So in the last uh, rank, we already covered the Global Peace Index that uh, the last rank goes to Afghanistan. But in this index, last rank goes to uh, Central African Republic. And guys, remember recently Niti Ayog also released the third edition of Sustainable Development Goal India Index in which the Niti Ayog ranked the state performance according to the Sustainable Development Goals, like the 17 Sustainable Development goals. But in 2020-21 edition, we covered the 16 um, sustainable development goals and Kerala retained the first rank and Bihar was adjusted as the worst performer. So you have to remember these things. These are very, very important. Guys, you can also see here the options like 111th rank. This is the rank of India in Human Freedom Index of 2020. Human Freedom Index of 2020 and the top country ranked as New Zealand. So you can remember. And 131st rank, this is the rank of India in Human Development Index of 2020. Earlier, India's rank was 129, but in 2020, India's rank is 131st. It is published by United Nations Development Program, and the top country was Norway. 10th rank, this was rank of India in Climate Change Performance Index. Climate Change Performance Index. And uh, uh, this is released by New Climate Institute of Greenwatch. And guys, remember, the top country is Sweden. Sweden under this index. So again, we covered the four uh, ranks of India and the world. So now we are moving to next section. It is a very important question section. You have to like this video. You have to share this video and you can subscribe our channel if you are new on this platform. And guys, you can join our telegram group from the description box link. And here is the first question in the very important section. What is the name of e-learning platform which was launched by Odisha government? 
So the very important keyword under this question, this is a e-learning platform and second it is launched by Odisha government and the name of this e-learning platform is e-partshala and e-mulyankan. So answer of this question is both A and C. So you can see here school and mass education minister of Odisha Samir Ranjan Das launched two portals. One is e-partshala, second is e-mulyankan. You don't have to remember the name of the union minister or sorry, state minister of uh, Odisha that is Samir Ranjan Das. You have to just remember the name of the portals that is e-partshala and e -mulyankan. So ePartshala is a web-based studying platform that has uh, repositories of e-contents within the type of paperwork, audios and movies. Those e-content will help for self-learning online lessons, assignments, assessments and analysis of the learner's progress. Next is the eMulyankan. It is a platform designed as a digital bank of practice sets and model questions for the students to apply for examinations. And guys, you can also remember the teacher could conduct exams, mock examination and the final examination under the same. And Odisha has begun figuring out the dropout and the migrant kids by door by door survey. Even Odisha government also set to begin live YouTube streaming for school kids from class 1 to class 8 for, from 21st of June when we will celebrate the International Yoga Day and they will uh, uh, start live YouTube streaming for the school kids from class 1 to class 8. And even Odisha government plans to activate the Odisha uh, Shiksha Sanjog, a WhatsApp based program to permit them to share e-content and supplies with the student. It also set to publish the e-content for class 1 to class 12 through the program like Radio Partshala, Shiksha Dharp on the Doodarshan because Radio Partshala and the Shiksha Darpan were already available for the student of class 10th, 11th and 12th but now they are launching from class 1 to 12th. So you can also remember about these things. So now uh, Odisha is very important state for you, very famous chief minister here, Naveen Patnaik ji and uh, the governor again very famous, governor of Odisha is Ganeshi. Lal. So you can remember Ganeshi Lal. And guys, you can remember there are very two important national parks. One is the Bitar Kanika National Park, again very famous. Next is Simli Pal. Simli Pal. Uh, it is one of the biosphere reserve of India. So you can remember. Moving to next question. Who has been appointed as the center government as counselor in India's permanent mission in the World Trade Organization? It means uh, at the World Trade Organization platform, this person will represent India as a permanent mission in the World Trade Organization. Answer of this question is very simple. Answer is Ashish Chandorkar. You can see here, government appoints Ashish Chandorkar as a director of India's World Trade Organization mission. And guys, you can also remember that he was appointed for the time period of three years. Appointment for the time period of three years. He is currently a director of Bengaluru based private company or you can say the policy think tank Shami Foundation. Shami Foundation of Policy and Research. But you don't have to remember the name of the organization which this person belongs to. You have to just remember the Ashish Chandorkar. He became the, uh, you can say the India's representative uh, in the permanent mission in the World Trade Organization. This is important. And World Trade Organization, I think you all know that uh, total member countries are 164. Its headquarters is in Geneva and it was established in which year? 1995. So you have to remember these things. But again, the appointments here are very, very important. You can see here the first appointment, uh, like Ujwala Singhania. Uh, she was recently appointed as the president of president of very famous organization FLO, Fikis Ladies Organization, and she was elected as the 38th president of this organization. Sumant Sina, we yesterday covered this question that uh, he uh, was awarded with the SDG Pioneer of the Year. SDG. Pioneer of the Year of 2021 by United Nation uh, um, Global Compact. So remember, Martin Griffith, he was recently appointed in the United Nations Humanitarian Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator. You have to just remember the first name that is Martin. And uh, he was appointed as the uh, Under General Secretary uh, in the United Nations Humanitarian Affairs. Moving to next question. Which company expanded cards tokenization with four banks like SBI, Indusind, HSBC and the Federal Bank? So the very important keyword under this question is card tokenization. Earlier this company has rolled out card tokenization with Kotec Mahindra Bank, SBI cards and Exist Bank. Now they are basically starting the card tokenization with SBI, Indusind, HSBC and the Federal Bank. And this company is guys Google Pay. You can see here Google Pay expands cards tokenization with the more Indian banks currently they are launching with the four Indian banks and you can see here through their credit card under tokenization the consumers could make contactless payment by using near field communication uh, capable devices phone at over 2.5 million visa merchant locations. In simple word you can see that uh, tokenization is a feature that enable user to make debit and credit card payments through a secure digital token 
without having to physically share the credit and the debit card details, especially the card number. Because during the payment process, the user's card number will be replaced with 16 random characters known as a token. You don't have to basically provide your uh, real 16 numbers. You will be provided with 16 random characters known as token in mobile and the uh, you can say the online transactions. And this token then allows payment to be processed without exposing sen sensitive account details that could breach security and the privacy. So this is the meaning of the tokenization. And guys, you can remember, uh, uh, they could also scan and pay at more than 1.5 million Bharat QR enabled merchants and the pay bills and recharge within their Google Pay application. And the addition of SBI and uh, other three banks will extend the tokenization offer to million of card users on the Visa network. Earlier, Visa has issued over 2 billion token creden uh, credentials globally. But now uh, they are also, Google Pay are also using the Visa network with these four banks. So you have to just remember the Google Pay and what is tokenization. This is the most important thing. And Google Pay, I think you all know uh, that um, uh, it was established. Uh, it was first released in 2015. Then uh, later as uh, uh, it was uh, fully fledged in 2018 released. And it uh, is available on the Android phones, tablets, even watches and uh, some other mediums. Headquarters in California, United States of America. See CEO is Sundar Pichai. Moving to next question. Which country is the chairman of 8th ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting plus 2021? So uh, here is very important keyword. One is the ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting, but here is the word plus. So it means I am talking about ASEAN plus Defense Ministers Meeting. And uh, uh, ASEAN stands for the 10 member countries and plus stands for 8 another country. So it means total 18 countries here. And who is currently the chairman of ASEAN? So very simple question we discussed uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. And answer of this question is Barunai. So you can see a uh, Defense Minister Rajna Singh. By default, it is a Defense Minister meeting. So Rajna Ji rep represented India and addressed 8th ASEAN Defense Ministers meeting plus. And you can see here, uh, this uh, ASEAN Defense Ministers meeting plus is an annual meeting of the defense ministers of 10 ASEAN countries and countries and eight dialogue partner countries. And these eight partner countries are basically not the member of ASEAN like Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand, South Korea, Russia and the United States of America. And Rajna Singh called for an open and inclusive order in the Indo-Pacific based on sovereignty and territorial integrity of nations. And he reaffirmed India's support to freedom of navigation, overflight and unrestricted commerce for all in international waters in accordance with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. As a member of the Financial Action Task Force, uh, he said India remains committed to combat financing of the terrorism. And guys, you can also remember about Asian Defense Ministers Meeting Plus. It was established in 2010 and 2021 chairmanship lies with the Brunei. And uh, total member countries are 10 and uh, Asian Plus, if we are talking about in the Defense Ministers Meeting, then 8 are the dialogue partners. And guys, you can also remember like uh, Singapore. Singapore is hosting World Economic Forum of 2021 this year. So this is important. You have to remember this. Moving to next question. But you can also remember about India. India is also hosting BRICS 2021. That is again very important. Next question. India has been played at which sport? Uh, India has been placed at which sport in the list of foreign clients money in Swiss banks during 2020. And one thing very important to this question that India money in the Swiss bank is now increased according to this report. So answer of this question is 51st. You can see here Indian funds in Swiss banks rise to over 20,000 crore in surge in securities and institutional holdings. And you can see here uh, this report is basically known as annual bank statistics of 2020. It is released by Swiss National Bank. This is the central bank of Switzerland and India uh, uh, with you can say 20,706 crore has increased from 6,625 crore in 2019. So in 2019 it is just almost 6600 crore now it is almost 21000 crore so almost increase of you can say a 14000 crore this is a huge and the united kingdom topped the list with the uh, uh, you can say the um, 377 billion Swiss franc, which is a currency of Switzerland and followed by 152 billion by the United States of America. It is also in Swiss franc. And based on the aggregate funds amongst BRICS nation, India was ranked below China and Russia, but above the South Africa and Brazil. It means on the top, uh, the China is on the first spot, Russia is on the second, third is India, fourth is South Africa and fifth is Brazil. So this is not an important data, but uh, uh, our money in the Swiss bank is now increasing. This is a very important concern for the Indian government because in uh, 2014, Modi government specially uh, underlined this point that India is uh, uh, 
focusing on the automatic exchange of information in the tax matters uh, in between Switzerland and India. And the framework provides financial information on all the Indian residents having accounts in the Switzerland since 2018. And the information was provided for the first to India in September 2019 and be followed each year. It means all the list, uh, uh, the residents who have been account in the Switzerland will be provided by the Switzerland government from the 2019 and each year. So you can also remember Swiss National Bank headquarters in Bern, Zurich. Bern, Zurich. Zurich is in Switzerland. So you have to just remember the name uh, of this bank who provided this list. That is by, by default Central Bank of Switzerland. And India's rank is on the 51st. And the top country which has the maximum money in the Swiss bank that is United Kingdom. United Kingdom. And second rank is United States of America. And India's rank is 50 first so you can remember and guys you can also remember the other ranks here these are again very very important you can see here the first rank is 86th it is india's rank in the corruption perception index of 2020 and uh, the country topped in this index is new zealand and denmark new zealand and denmark fourth rank again asia's power index of 2020 Asia's power index of 2020 and the top country is United States of America. Next 10th rank of India is in the Asia Pacific personalized health index. Health index and uh, India rank on the 10th and this index is released by Economist Intelligence Unit and the top country is Singapore. Singapore. So you can remember. Moving to next question. India has targeted to achieve the restoration of 26 million hectare of degraded land by which year? So guys, recently Minister of State for Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Babul Supriyoji, released the latest version of Desertification and Land Degradation Atlas of India was released. And it was released on a virtual event organized on the account of Desertification and Drought Day, which was celebrated on the 17th of June. And guys, remember, India will achieve this target of restoration of 26 million hectare of degraded land by the year of 2030. By the year of 2030. 30. So you have to remember this year because this is very very important and you can also see here desertification and land degradation atlas of India based on the IRS AWR data of the 2014 uh, and uh, 2003 5 and uh, it is uh, also provided by the help of ISRO. And the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and Minister of State is ba uh, Babul Supriyoji released the latest version of desertification and land degradation atlas of India. And the atlas provides state-wise area of degraded lands in the time period between the 2018 and 19. And uh, also, uh, uh, Indian government released a coffee table book which is known as India Hosting UNCCD COP 14 and a short film on UNCCD COP, 20, C uh, COP 14. Um, was also released during this event. So you can just remember this. And uh, India targeted to achieve this commitment. And it is with the focus of sustainable and optimal utilization of the land resources. But you have to remember the Union Minister is Prakash Javedkar, constituency is Rajya Sabha, and uh, Rajya Sabha member uh, constituency is Maharashtra. Minister of State is Babul Supriya, constituency is Asnol. Asnol, West Bengal. West Bengal, but uh, uh, I think he was uh, also uh, uh, defeated in the West Bengal state elections. I think I don't. I am not sure, but uh, I think he is defeated now. So, uh, but in the member of parliament, uh, his constituency is as known in West Bengal. Now, moving to next question, you don't have to remember this question uh, uh, in detail. You have to just remember as in slide. Moving to next question, Labour Minister Santosh Gangwa signed statement of intent with which organisation for youth empowerment? So guys, this organization is UNICEF, United Nations Children Fund. It is to provide a platform for cooperation between them to implement solutions to tackle the employment and skilling challenges for adolescents and youth in India. And you can also see here UNICEF signed statement of intent with the Ministry of Labor and Employment. You can see here the Santosh Gangwarji. And it is to provide a platform for cooperation between them to implement solutions to tackle the employment and skilling challenges for adolescents and the youth in India, especially focus on vulnerable population including young people and the special needs, youth living care institutions, migrant youth, victims of child labor, violence, child marriage and the trafficking and etc. And this collaboration intends to power the young generation in India to gain relevant skills, to gain relevant skills and guidance and enable them to contribute and shape the country's future. And guys, you can also remember that UNICEF with its public and private sector partners established the UVA Generation Unlimited that is Gen U as a partnership in India for the 
children. You can also remember this because Gen U is very important. Gen U stands for Generation Unlimited and it is a global multi-stakeholder platform that aims to prepare young people to transition to productive work and active citizenship. And list of Yuva objective is basically like uh, you can see here to build pathway for 100 million youth or the young people to aspirational economic opportunities to facilitate 200 million young people to gain relevant skills and future for work uh, especially to partner with 300 million young people and develop their leadership so these are basically the list of yuba objectives which will be fulfilled by the year of 2030 by the india so the mes uh, the main basic target is to provide uh, uh, you can say the uh, skills and guidance to the youth so that they can become uh, uh, the job provider rather than the job seeker. So this is the main criteria. So you have to remember about the UNICEF here, uh, United Nations Children Fund, its headquarters in New York and its executive director is Henrita Foray. And guys, you can also remember about Ministry of Labor and uh, Employment, Santosh Gangwarji and uh, Santosh Kumar Gangwar, that is the full name. Lok Sabha constituency is Bareilly, Bareilly and uh, it is in Uttar Pradesh. Moving to next question. Founding president and liberation hero of which country, Kenneth David Kaunda, passed away? So, uh, very important question because uh, he was the founding president of this country. Also, uh, he uh, played very important role uh, for the freedom of this country. That's why he was known as the liberation hero of this country. And name is Kenneth David Kaunda. And uh, he was first president and the founding president of country of Zambia. So, you can see here, Zambia's founding father president, Kenneth Kaunda, dies. You can see here the picture and you can remember the question for a long time period. Kenneth Konda was popularly known as the initials name with KK, was the first president of Zambia. And uh, uh, he ruled Zambia for 27 years from 1964, when the South African nation won its independence from the Britain until 1991. It means he ruled from 1964 to 1991. And he stood up for the white minority rule in the South African countries, especially uh, uh, like in the Angola, Mozambique, Namibia. Libya, South Africa, Rhodesia, or you can say now Zimbabwe. Uh, he also organized civil disobedience known as the Cha 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 campaign. And uh, he also organized so many movements to uh, recognize Zambia as a different country. He was also founder or uh, member of the Northern Rhodesian African National Congress in Zimbabwe. He was also one of the most committed activists against the HIV AIDS in Africa. So guys, you have to just remember the name. Name is Kenneth. You can just remember the initials, Kenneth. And he was the first president of Zambia and the liberation hero of Zambia. So you can remember. Moving to next question. Who won the gold medal in the meeting, Cidadel de Lisoba in Portugal? So meeting is basically a city in the Portugal. And who won the gold medal in this uh, 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 event of the Portugal? This is Neeraj Chopra. So you can see here Neeraj Chopra. And Indian javelin thrower Neeraj Chopra from Haryana won the gold medal in the meetings Portugal with the throw of 83.18 meters recorded with the, his sixth and the last attempt. And guys, he had also qualified for the Tokyo Olympics of 2020 with a throw of 87.86 meter in the South Africa in January 2020. So it is not so much important. You can just remember the question as in slide. Who won the gold medal in the meeting Cidade de Lisboa in Portugal? So meeting is a place in the, uh, uh, or you can say the city of Lisbon. Lisbon is in Portugal. So you can remember. And guys, you can also remember the other players here because uh, the examiner can ask the name of the player and the uh, 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 field belonging to like Anurani she is again very famous javelin thrower so uh, she belongs to javelin throw uh, Duti Chand again very famous player uh, but uh, a very famous sprinter 100 meter race Shippal Singh very famous player of javelin thrower and Neera Chopra is also javelin thrower so you can remember moving to next question it is from picture basically pacify an international collaborative sky survey led by an Indian astronomer so first of all, you have to remember what is this PACIFY. PACIFY is basically stands for Polar Area Stellar Imaging in Polarization High Accuracy Experiment. It is an instrument used in sky surveys to study stars and is being lent by an Indian astronomer. And its main objective is study the polarization and the light coming from the millions of stars. And the Institute of Astrophysics, Greece is the leader, but other members include Inter-University Center of Astronomy and Astrophysics in India, University of Oslo and the other universities 
universities of different different countries and the project has funded with 1 million dollar or almost 7.39 crore and uh, uh, 7.39 crore rupees are basically provided by the Infosys Foundation, USA National Science Foundation and the other uh, foundations of the different different countries and guys you can remember this instrument will survey the night sky in the southern and the northern hemisphere using high quality optical uh, uh, polarimeters polarimeters and the project will help to understand the mysteries surrounding the origin of the universe and uh, uh, the instrument will put more focus on the uh, you can say the uh, faint polarization that takes place in the light coming from far away stars which are not yet properly studied and measurements are obtained from the uh, satellites so you have to just remember the name of this uh, 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 instrument that is specify and what is the meaning polar area stellar imaging in polarization high accuracy experiment and it is uh, used to sky service to study star and one Indian astronomer will lead this uh, uh, pacify instrument. So uh, the name is not mentioned but uh, you have to just remember the name of the instrument. Moving to next question again it is from picture it is a new thing which is started by Ministry of Road and Transport notifies common formal or the format for issuance of PUC. Now this PUC code is very famous now pollution control certificate across the country. You can see here PUC certificate is a document issued by the government for one vehicles when the emission level of it are in the compliance with the authorized emission standard. So it is a very good method which is started by Ministry of Transport and it aims to curb pollution levels in the country and there will be a QR code on the puck from covering all details of the vehicle and the rejection slip is also featured for the first time. It will be given to the vehicle owner in case his or her vehicle fails in meeting the permissible value of uh, per emission norms and the slip can be used for the service of the vehicles and QR code is again very uh, uh, new type of the thing under the puck or you can say the um, pollution control certificate from covering all details of the vehicle and uh, uh, you can also remember this will help in fetching information about a particular vehicle from the database and the information listed in the certificate will be confidential but only for the last four digits will be visible and guys you can also remember Ministry of Road, Transport and Highway sets target for reducing road accident deaths by the 50% by 2024 and uh, this is declared by our uh, Union Minister Nitin Jairam Gadkariji during the virtual session on the role of corporates in uh, 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 arresting road uh, fatalities organized by the Federation of Indian Chambers and the Commerce and Industry. But you have to remember about Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways. Nitin Jairam Gadkri constituency is Nagpur. Nagpur and Maharashtra Minister of State is General Vijay Kumar Singh. But the most important thing here is what is this PUC? Pollution Control Certificate. You have to remember this. Moving to next question. So guys, all the most important and the very important questions are now covered. We are moving to the important section, but you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible. Subscribe this channel if you're new on this platform and join our Telegram group. And guys, uh, if you're watching this video currently, then please like this video. So here is the first question. What is the national helpline number which was launched by Ministry of uh, Home Affairs for preventing financial loss of individuals due to cyber fraud? It means if you are facing any uh, financial uh, loss in the cyber fraud, then you have to call on this number and this helpline number is 155260. Answer of this question is 6. Uh, you can see here, uh, Ministry of Home Affairs organized and operationalized this national helpline 155260 and a reporting platform for pending financial loss due to the cyber fraud. And you can also see here, it is launched by Ministry of Home Affairs and the name and the number of this helpline is 155260. And it is a reporting platform via citizen financial cyber fraud reporting and management system for preventing financial loss of individuals due to cyber fraud. And the helpline was uh, uh, soft launched in April uh, 2021 and since then more than 1.85 crore of defrauded money is saved from the frauders. So this is a very important thing. And uh, uh, you can say uh, the maximum to maximum states are now implementing this till date seven states and the union territories like Chhattisgarh, Delhi, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Telangana, Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh uh, covering then 35% of the country population is basically started this mechanism. And these type of the mechanisms have empowered the victims of cyber frauds, banks and the police to share fraud uh, relation information resulting in the real time action. So guys, this is very important thing which is started by Ministry of Home Affairs. And uh, you know, uh, who is the Union Minister? Amish Shahji and constituency is Gandhinagar. Moving to next question. Which Indian Institute signed a MOU with the Central Institute of the Road Transport to build industry oriented knowledge in the transport management? 
So this time the institute is I am Nagpur. You can see here I am Nagpur and CIRT Pune MOU to usher in new beginning in the areas of MGMT and automobile. MGMT stands for uh, that is management and automobile. So you can see here under this agreement corporate and the government professionals will be given executive training and the other educational programs other educational programs. And guys, this institute, that is the Central Institute of Road Transport is in Pune and uh, Indian Institute of Management is in Nagpur. So it means the agreement is in between Pune and established automobile hub and Nagpur, the logistic hub, the center of the country. It will help in the development of the automobile hub of the country, particularly in the transport sector, because both the locations are very, very important as if we are talking about the automobile sector and the logistic sector. And it provides for the research, collaboration and the consultancy engagements between the two institutions because uh, two are very near like Pune and the Nagpur and uh, remember this it is Ministry of Road and Transport again and it is I am Nagpur I am Nagpur so uh, I think it, this news is not so much difficult to remember because I am Nagpur in the last six months I think we covered one or two times this uh, I am Nagpur so just remember and Central Institute of uh, Road and Transport you can remember this uh, uh, comes under the Ministry of Shipping and Transport and the Association of the State Road Transport undertakings of Maharashtra. Its headquarters is in Pune, Maharashtra. Moving to next and it is just a one-liner question. If you want to remember then you can otherwise it is not so much important. I am covering this question because we want to cover all the news. Who won US Women Open 2021? I am not talking about the tennis tournament. I am talking about the golf tournament. So uh, answer is very simple. You have to just remember the answer. Answer is Yuka Sasso. So you can just remember Uka Sasso or the Yuka Sasso became the first Philippines player to win a major golf tournament and Sasso a dual citizen with a uh, Filipino mother and Japanese father tied uh, uh, you can say the youngest champion at the tournament after winning the 76th US Opens uh, Golf Championship 2021 at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. So you have to just remember Yuka Sasso US Open uh, Tournament of the Golf. So now we are moving to the question uh, in the one-liner important points. So here is the first point. Interna uh, sorry, Information and Broadcasting Ministry notifies amendment cable TV rules and TRI launches channel selector portal. So it is a new kind of thing which is launched by TRI, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India basically launched a TV channel selector web portal similar to the TV channel selector app released by the smartphones by the TRI. And the portal was launched to help consumer who don't own a smartphone or wish to use web browser. So uh, uh, using this portal, uh, you can check and modify uh, your subscription, view all channels or the uh, bouquet of channels which are provided by the uh, uh, DTH cable operators or the channels that do uh, several other things and new regulatory framework for broadcasting at civil uh, cable services also notified but you don't have to remember these things you can remember ministry of information and broadcasting union minister is prakash javedkar and constituency is rajya sabha maharashtra and uh, telecom regulatory authority of india you can remember about tri tri's headquarter is in new delhi and its chairman is pd vagela pd vagela prime minister launched customized crash course uh, program for covid-19 frontline workers so this program is launched by Narendra Modi ji and it is a customized crash course for the program for the COVID-19 frontline workers and the training program will be conducted in 111 training centers over the 26 states. So under the training program about 1 lakh 1 lakh youth will be provided training under the next 2 to 3 months and the program has been designed as a special program under the central component of Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana of Ministry of Skill and Development and the programs consist of 6 courses and has been designed by the top experts in India and the program aims to create skilled and uh, non-medical healthcare workers to fill the present and the future needs of manpower in the health sector. So next, India's IT to hit 300 to 350 billion revenues by 2025 and top 5 IT companies to add over 96,000 employees in financial 22. It is a survey of NASCOM. So guys, this is a new survey of NASCOM that is National Association of Software and Services Company. And uh, according to this survey, uh, you can say the Indian IT industry is on track to meet its vision of 300 to 350 billion dollar annual revenues by 2025 and currently the Indian IT industry is being a uh, net uh, you can say hirer of the skilled talent and employs around 1.6 crore workers in financial year 21. It added uh, 1.30 lakh people in financial year 21 and it also has to robust hiring plans in 2022. So you have to just remember it is a survey of NASCOM uh, but examiner will not ask the survey things so but you have to remember this organization. It was established 
in 1988. Its headquarters in New Delhi. Its president is Dev Jani Ghosh. Dev Jani Ghosh. Next is Danish fund IFU or Denmark's fund IFU. UNOPS uh, S3I partners with the ASME solar project in Rajasthan. So very complicated news. So examiner will not ask this type of news. But you have to remember this uh, is uh, related to uh, one of the renewable power project in Rajasthan. And guys, there are three companies basically. One is ACME Solar uh, Solar Holding Limited, and they signed a shareholder agreement with the United Nations Office for Project Services (UNOPS). United Nations Office for Project Services. Its uh, program is Sustainable Investment in Infrastructure and Innovation, and Denmark-based Investment Fund for Developing Countries (IFU) stands for Investment Fund for Developing Countries. So these three organization is uh, tying up e each other for developing a 250 megawatt solar power plant in Rajasthan. And maximum share holding lies with ACME Solar Power Project, and this uh, holds 51% stake. IFU basically holding 39%, and UNOPC. Uh, UNOPS basically holding 10%. So uh, this is not so much important. You have to just remember it is under Rajasthan. Next, World Crocodile Day 2021 basically observed on the 17th of June. 17th of June, guys. It is uh, World Crocodile Day. So why this day is observed? It is just to create awareness about the difficulties faced by the endangered crocodiles and uh, uh, around the world. And World Crocodile Day is also known as World Croc Day. So you can also remember this. And guys, there is another day, Sustainable Gastronomy Day, two thousand twenty-one, on June eighteen. It is a basically observed every year on eighteenth of June to create awareness about autism and. Uh, because autism pride day is also observed on the 18th of june and guys you can also remember that sustainable gastronomy day is uh, uh, to acknowledge gastronomy as a cultural expression related to the natural and cultural diversity of the world and the the day is observed to create awareness of its contribution to sustainable development so both the days are not so much important i am covering to cover all the news so now we are moving to the question of the day what was the question of 18th of june 2021 question was very simple what was the maximum limit of slr or statutory liquid Ratio had Nasima committee recommended. So very simple question. So I think all the students uh, uh, the gave answer very much right. The Nasima committee had recommended bringing down the statutory pre uh, limits such as SLR and the CRR. And it recommended that SLR should be reduced to 25% over the period of time, and CRR should be reduced to 10% over the period of time. So it recommended CRR to will be reduced at the 10%, and SLR should be reduced at the 25%. So it is a recommendation of Narsima committee. So answer of this question is A. That is 25%. So now we are moving to the question of the day. What is the type of banking where banks operate only from a single branch? Called as very simple question. Even if you don't know the answer, if one uh, uh, you don't know about anything about banking, then you can give an, give the answer very simply. So uh, give me answer in the comment box. I'm waiting your answer. Please like this session and uh, subscribe this channel and share this video as maximum as possible. Please press the bell button so that you can receive the notification on time. And it is Affairs Cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section definitely. And it is my personal. promise that if you are watching the videos regularly and if you are reading the current affairs from our pdfs then your current affairs section will go strong and guys you can subscribe our pdf from our application application downloading link is given in the description box and you can subscribe for one year as well as for two year we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ash10 and thank you guys for watching this video and take care bye bye